Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. Not too long ago, I upgraded my main C drive, or my primary storage, from the Samsung 960 Evo to the Corsair MP600. There's a problem with this, though. This Corsair MP600, much like uh, some of the top NVMe storage devices, are supported for Gen 4. Can you run them on Gen 3? Well, that's what I wanted to find out in this video and test out the performance or at least the performance handicap or impact that I might get with running a Gen 4 NVMe drive on my Z390 chipset. So let's jump right into it. First this Corsair MP600 much like uh, Oris and a number of the top vendors is a very fast NVMe Gen 4 PCIe device. But the cost is up there. I did. I was able to grab this one for around 180 something, when it's normally around two. Well, the two terabytes around 400, but the one terabyte's around 200 dollars. So I was able to get it for a good deal. One of the main reasons why I wanted to grab it now was because the price was cheaper than it normally was, and on top of that, on a video I did not too long ago, I've been seeing a lot of shortages or at least supply issues when it comes to computer components. So I wanted to grab it while I could. I'm sure there may not even be an issue with NVMe or SSDs in general uh, as far as selling, but you know, with the motherboards, uh, power supplies, and different components just being out of stock, back order, or just taking forever to ship, I just wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way. There are other factors that came into play, but let's get into performance first. With Adel Benchmark, we saw the Corsair MP600 on a Gen 3 motherboard or Gen 3 PCIe motherboard only hit about 3500 reads and 3400 writes. Now that's a problem because this device can hit close to 5000 on read and 4200 on writes. So we can tell that Gen 3 is impacting us or holding this drive back from its peak performance. Now on the 960 Evo prior to the upgrade I was running in RAID 0. It's not really good for redundancy because if one of those drives fails there goes your data but it does improve speed. For example one drive by itself was uh, 3184 read 1460 writes while in RAID 0 we were hitting 3450 read and 2860 writes. Now the 960 EVO by itself without using any RAID is a good contender and it can get the job done. But there were other factors at play that made me upgrade. Moving on to Crystal Disk, we saw 3568 read and 3361 writes. While the 960 by itself saw 3261 on the reads and 1550 on the writes. In the RAID 0 config, we saw 3545 read and 29.28 writes. So again, the 960 EVOs and RAID 0 were, were hanging in there and the only thing that's holding us back from the top performance of the MP600 is the chipset. Now if you want to see the data uh, for the IOPS in 4K, go ahead and pause the screen. Uh, some of the benchmarks gave me some issues with this or were not giving me numbers that I really like because on the Corsair uh, MP600, which I think we should be about 680k uh, reads and 600k writes. But these were the numbers that I got not only with the 960 Evo by itself, but also in RAID and then the MP600. Moving on to temps, because this drive does come with a nice little beefy heatsink which most NVMe drives at the beginning when they were first coming out did not come with a heat sink which is why motherboards nowadays offer uh, kind of integrated heat sinks you know that might sync with the chipset uh, of the motherboard this one comes with a decent size and you might want to check the height to make sure it doesn't interfere with your graphics card because and depending on the GPU and the positioning of your M.2 slot you might hit it and it might not let the graphics card seat all the way but temperatures were pretty good the MP600 saw a max of 51 an average of 48 and a minimum of 43 degrees Celsius while the 960 Evo did have a heat sink because of two reasons one the ASRock Z390 Tachi 
Ultimate has a heat sink on the bottom M.2 slot, but as well, I grabbed an EK Waterblocks M.2 heatsink. I did a video on that not too long ago comparing the two with or without a heatsink. But with the heatsink, we saw a max of 50 degrees, an average of 43, and a minimum of 41 degrees Celsius. Without the heatsink, we saw a maximum of 82, an average of 57, and a minimum of 48. Temperatures or thermals are bad for your MV MVME storage or any storage. If your storage is running hot, it's going to throttle itself or it's going to not perform as well. So that's why these heat sinks are important and that's why modern day MVME drives come with heat sinks. And if you get one without, more than likely your motherboard should have the capability to allow some type of cooling or sinking with the overall motherboard, especially in the chipset uh, itself. I upgraded to this drive even though I knew there was going to be a performance impact because of a few reasons. One, I was running out of main storage. On your C drive, when you're installing programs, games, especially games that you want to get the peak efficiency, right? You don't want to st install on your regular 4 terabyte hard drive or your 850 EVO. You just want to get the best performance 24-7. Those games add up. 80 gigs, 50 gigs, 20 gigs, and then you run out of space. So with two 250 gigs, giving me a total of 500, really a total of like 460 something, I was running out of space. So I upgraded for additional space. That's why I got the one terabyte model. Second reason, I do plan on upgrading my overall system in the future. It's just not something I want to jump onto right now. With the 10 series out, it's not really looking too enticing AMD is looking good, but I do have a competitive product that's going to last me for a while. The 9900K has served me well, it's doing very good, and I can overclock it like a beast. I am completely fine with my system. However, I know in the future that when I do upgrade, those motherboards, whether it's AMD or, or uh, Intel, will support Gen 4 PCIe. So I now have a hard drive that I can move with me to my new system. So I'm looking towards the future, as well as increasing the overall storage. And the third one really was my son needed a, a drive rather than a regular laptop, you know, 2.5 inch platter hard drive. And I figured I could go ahead and disconnect my RAID and give him one of the 250 gigs that he can use as his main C drive. And then he could use that platter hard drive as additional storage. So it served a number of purposes. But I wanted to share this data with you. I hope it helps you out. If it did, do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this uh, and whether or not you're running a Gen 4 NVMe storage uh, device on a Gen 3 chipset and what are your performance numbers. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for stopping by.